And then we will hear from Kim Schmittner. Kim is with the Leadership for Liberty and also founding a new group uh, called the Pennsylvania School Board Coalition to raise up more school board members that stand for taxpayers rather than the tax Well, leaders. somebody who is doing that at the local level, trying to make a difference, because the gentleman to my right here are trying to make a difference in Harrisburg. But what goes on in Harrisburg has to be supported at home, and it is ground up and top down. Policy change. Uh, Kim Schmittner is working on things in the Lehigh Valley and wants to share with you how you can become more active and what they're doing to make a difference in their community and what hopefully you will do as well when you go back home. Kim? Of course I have to follow, Simon. That's going to be a tough act to follow. Um, uh, as Matt mentioned, uh, I am Kim Schmittner, and I am vice chair with Leadership for Liberty. We are out of the Lehigh Valley. Uh, we are a group that is um, very focused on local issues. Our mission is to analyze public policies and government actions, educate the public about government operations, especially at the local level, and empower the citizenry to take action. And as Matt said, it's very important to work at the, the Harrisburg level down, but without the support from the ground and the grassroots up, it's very difficult to institute change. As Simon was talking about, we ha and Matt also, we have a Republican uh, governor, Republican House, and a Republican Senate. But yet these changes are not being, or we're not seeing them. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is because the citizenry really doesn't understand how it affects them. We all know that things are messed up at the, at the national level and even at the Harrisburg level. And a lot of citizens think that it's, they're, it's too separated from them and it really doesn't affect them. I'm sure you've seen the poll where uh, you know, they've asked, hey, what is, how is Congress doing? And everybody gives Congress a very bad rating and, oh, they shouldn't re be reelected. But then when they ask about their specific congressman, oh, well, he's great, I'll reelect him. Everybody at, at, at the local level has a mentality, it isn't affecting me, it's not in my district, it's somebody else's district that's bad. And that's the, the idea that we really need to change at the local level. We need to make the, uh, the, the public aware and understand how things affect them. We learned today that the, the state and local debt is $9,400 for every citizen of Pennsylvania. How many of your neighbors know that? At the national level, every man, woman, and child's portion of the national debt is $49,500. So between the national, state, and local level, each one of us in this room, every one of our children, grandchildren, parents, our share of the debt for the reckless spending of our government is $60,000. How many people have $60,000 lying around that they can hand over to gov government to pay for that debt? What would they do with that $60,000? Would they go on vacation? Could they put their children through college? These are the types of issues that we can hit home with the citizens. And I have found that not party, because again, we're hearing it's both Democrats and Republicans. But when you make people understand how it is affecting them, especially financially in this very tough economic time, it really hits home and it shows it affects them. So that's what we focus on at uh, Leadership for Liberty, is really taking those national issues and local issues and making people at home understand how it affects them directly. Now, how do you get people involved? We have Simon, who's elected to the school board. Uh, and we have some school boards around the state that have a majority of people that are like mind with, uh, with Simon, but a lot of places we don't. So in those districts, what we need to do is we need to activate the citizenry to attend their school board meetings. One thing that Simon recently did is he passed a resolution for uh, no teacher strikes. Um, and wouldn't it, it, that's just one district in the state. Could you imagine of the 500 school districts across the state if we could get just 50, 10% of those school districts all to pass that same resolution, or a resolution on prevailing wage, or a res resolution on collecting union dues, can you imagine what that would do to Harrisburg? Because it would gain, first of all, public attention, because the media would, get, would, would grab onto that if 50 districts across the state all did the same thing. Um, and, and it would also force the hand of the legislature to do something, because as we all know, politicians like to do something about a crisis. And we need to create that crisis. 
So what <clears throat> Leadership for Liberty, Liberty decided to do is we have launched a, uh, about two months ago, uh, we'll officially launch it at our breakfast next, next Saturday, but we are launching the Pennsylvania School Board Coalition. What we're hearing a lot from newly elected school board directors and also citizens is they don't know what, when they get elected, what do they do? They go to the, um, the PSBA, the Pennsylvania School Board Association, and they're told, well, you're new. Just for the next six months, just don't say anything. Just sit and learn. And they're also told, well, pretty much the, su the superintendent, they really run the show. Just kind of do what they tell you to do. Well, that's the way the game has been played. And we can't afford to play that game any longer by their rules. We need to change the rules of how the game is played. And so the Pennsylvania School Board Coalition, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting over the plague, so my, my voice is going. But <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to coordinate those school districts, not only school board directors, but citizens that are active in their communities, uh, in their school, school districts, to coordinate, communicate, thank you, communicate. <clears throat> so we can get 50 uh, school districts across the state to sign on resolutions simultaneously. When you have one district that does it, it's really easy for the union to come down on that one district. But if you have 50 or 100 districts across the state, it's gonna be real hard for them to spread out their resources and take care, put out the fires in all these places. So that's what, really what the Pennsylvania School Board Coalition is, is looking to do, offer alternate training um, to change the rules of the game so they understand what they can do uh, when they get elected to school board, or even for citizens, what they can do to hold their school boards accountable. I, I totally went off my notes, so I'm gonna just wing it. But just to give you some examples of some successes that we've already seen, We've had people attending the Allentown City Council meeting, where recently there was a grant that uh, was supposed to be rubber stamped and sent through. But the new, uh, the, the new council members, uh, I'm sorry, this is, uh, yeah, it was, it was in Allentown. They said, well, wait a minute, we're not sure whether we want to take this grant or not. We need to, to investigate that. Well, suddenly, there were a couple uh, establishment folks in the room that turned white. And the reason they turned white is it turns out that some of this money had already been spent. Nobody approved it. What's the point of having commissioners if the bureaucrats are making these decisions already before the grant is even approved? So we're working on exposing that. In Northwestern uh, School District, we had a newly elected school board who was very, very excited and they wanted to institute positive change in their district and they started talking directly with uh, uh, school district employees without first running it by the superintendent. Well, the, super, uh, the superintendent got a little upset about that, and she called a meeting to teach them the proper chain of command. Well, there was an article that was posted in the morning call, and uh, Leadership for Liberty and the PSBC, our group, jumped on it. We actually had one of our board members write a blog about it. And basically she said, this is wrong. The taxpayers elect the school board directors who then hire the superintendent. That's the chain of command. That blog went viral in the Northwestern School District and it made a lot of people mad. And that superintendent got a lot of phone calls and she was schooled on what really was the proper chain of command, and suddenly now her tune has changed a little bit. So that's, that's another success. We have another uh, newly elected school board director in the East Penn School District, who is looking at the school district's budget, and she's drilling into the detailed budget. And of course, the uh, PSBA will tell you, oh, well, don't count the tomatoes in the kitchen. Well, if those tomatoes cost $1,000 each, and you're buying 10,000 of them, you better start counting the tomatoes. And that's exactly what she's doing. She's been told that these details don't exist, which has since found not to be true. And now she's been promised to be given those uh, records, but it's been two weeks and she still doesn't have them. But she's still pushing. And this is the key. She's drilling into the budget. She's being told in 20 years nobody's ever looked at this. And she answered, well, maybe that's the problem. So she is, she is a very brave uh, young lady, and she's making change in East Penn. 
<clears throat> Which brings me to the first initiative that uh, Pennsylvania School Board Coalition is going to be undertaking. We're actually putting together a packet on how best to understand your school district's budget, what account numbers to ask for and drill that you could drill into. Because I'm sure when you hear every year, we have to raise your taxes. Because if we don't raise your taxes, we have to eliminate teachers or eliminate girls' soccer or eliminate art and band. And of course, the public gets in an uproar. Well, we could actually show you where to look in the budget that you can cut wasteful spending without affecting those programs or classroom sizes. Who can argue with that? If you're going to cut the waste and not, and not raise taxes and maybe even get a tax cut, who can argue with that? So we're putting together alternate budgets. And finally, uh, another success story that shows you how much work that we have to do. We have another newly elected school board director in the Saucon Valley School District. And he just recently went to the uh, PSBA meeting and there were several legislators in the room and they were talking about um, mandate relief, which is a valid concern. And it, it ended and it was over and he raised his hand and he said, well, I'm sorry, there's a 500 pound gorilla in the room and it's called Peasers. And we haven't talked about that today. And he gave him some numbers, some facts. And he said he got a dumbfounded blank look from the people that were sitting on the panel. They don't know what to do. And so that's, that shows you that this has to start at the local level, that it, it comes from the top down and the bottom up. Without the support of grassroots and the citizens, the people in Harrisburg are not going to be able to do the change that needs to be done. Because, again, they don't hear from us. We heard that today. They don't hear from citizens because, A, they don't know what the real problem is. They don't see how it affects them. And they, they don't understand. So our job is to the three Cs, competence, credibility, and confidence. And through Leadership for Liberty and Pennsylvania School Board Coalition, that's what we're giving to people. And we're hoping to spread this further than the Lehigh Valley. We do have a table in the exhibit hall, so if you are interested in more information, please visit us at our table. Thank you very much. Any questions?